Hello and welcome to the second episode of the LabGrid video series. My name is Bastian Krause and I will show you in this video how to automate your embedded board setup. Let's do a short recap of LabGrid resources first. So let's look at the LabGrid documentation here. Scrolling down a little bit, the configuration and then resources. Resources are passive components. We distinguish managed resources that are discoverable and can appear and dis disappear during runtime. That's what we learned in the last video, where we added my 13 port USB hub and added all those UDEF matches. And then there are normal resources, which are always considered available. A resource can be a serial port, a USB SD multiplexer, a USB controllable power switch. LabGrid knows a lot of resources already. Now we come to something new. In the configuration chapter, we go to the drivers section. Drivers bind to one or more resources and use them. We have high level drivers that bind against protocols, so a set of drivers that implement a common interface or even bind against a specific driver. As an example, there is this serial driver that binds to the serial port we defined in the first video. This is a low level driver. When we scroll down to the shell driver here, we see that the shell driver binds on top of a protocol. Let's scroll up again. We see that the serial driver implements the console protocol, which the shell driver binds against. So if we use both drivers, the serial driver is responsible for receiving and transmitting data and the shell driver on top interprets this data. The shell driver sends commands if it detects a prompt, distinguishes that prompt from command output and retrieves the command's exit code. It also handles the login and provides more high-level functionality like retrieving the target's IP address. Drivers must be activated before they are used. On activation, their resources, protocols and drivers they bind against are checked for availability. If a driver binds against another driver implicitly via protocol or explicitly by specifying a specific driver, these drivers are automatically activated as well. We will soon see how this works in practice. But first, there is one more thing to discover. LabGrid strategies. Strategies are special types of drivers. Strategies can bring your board to a certain defined state. Let's have a look at the Bearbox strategy that is shipped with LabGrid. In order to do that, let's visit the LabGrid repository on GitHub. In the LabGrid directory, then strategy and then Bearbox strategy. First, we have a status enum with a set of states. Unknown of Bearbox and Shell. Bearbox is the bootloader used on my board here, similar to uBoot. Here we have the Bearbox strategy class. We already learned that drivers bind against resources, protocols and drivers. Because strategies are a special kind of drivers, they also have a binding map. We have four attributes in our binding map here. First, power, mapped to a driver implementing the power protocol. The LabGrid driver magic allows us to access this using the power attribute of the strategy then. The same applies to console, meaning we need some driver that implements the console protocol. Then we have the bearbox attribute mapping to the bearbox driver and the shell attribute mapping to the shell driver. We will later see how we can tell LabGrid to use the specific drivers we want that bind against the actual set of resources we have exported. LabGrid uses the Atre Python module imported up here. This is the reason for this special attribute defined here. The main thing a strategy consists of is the transition method, a state machine. First, we check if the argument the transition method received is mappable to the status enum. Then, check if we already reached the state we are requested to transition to. If that is true, simply return. Now it's getting interesting. What happens if the off status is requested? We deactivate the driver that implements the console protocol. The board might have been in another state already, so we leave that in a clean state here. Then the driver that implements the power protocol is activated. We see in the next line why that's needed. Here the strategy powers the board off. That's 
what's happening if the off state is requested. Let's go to the next state, bare box. Bare box is the bootloader. First we transition to state off doing all of this above here. Then activate the console protocol driver, which is currently deactivated. See up here. If we would activate that driver after power cycling, there might already be data on the serial console while we wait for the underlying power device to finish its operation. That's why we do that early. The power driver is already activated so we can do a power cycle, basically turning the board on here since it was already off before. Now activate self bare box. That's the bare box driver. By activating that driver, bare box output is recognized, the auto boot countdown is interrupted and the bare box shell is recognized. So the board is now in the bare box shell and we could use that. If we should transition to the shell state, then do all of the above, then run the bare box boot command, meaning we boot the default boot target here, and then the bare box driver's await boot looks for the Linux kernel's version string. That means Bearbox has successfully handed over to the Linux kernel here. And finally, the shell driver is activated. Again, similar to the Bearbox driver, the shell driver handles the login, checks that we have a valid prompt. Down here, we save the requested state as the new state that we have successfully transitioned into. In the first video, we used LabGrid's command line interface called LabGrid Client. LabGrid Client has its own internal resource to driver mapping. It tries to instantiate the appropriate driver on its own internally. So we already used drivers in the first video implicitly without knowing about them. High level drivers are typically not used by LabGrid Client itself. Now that we want to use drivers outside of LabGrid Client, we need to specify them on our own. We do that by creating our own local environment configuration. This configuration can be used with LabGrid Client as well as with LabGrid PyTest plugin and the scripting interface. Let's look at LabGrid's documentation once again, scrolling down to Configuration, Environment Configuration. That's how the environment configuration looks like. We start a new file. Let's call it nfyaml. The first key is the targets key, so let's copy that. Now we must set the target's name. There is something special here. If you call your target main, LabGrid will use it without specifying the name. If you call it something else, you must specify the name explicitly. So for this example, let's use main. Then there is the resources key. We could specify resources here, but we already have the exporter and coordinator set up. We did that in the first video. The coordinator already knows all the resources we added to our place. So the only thing we need to set here is the name of the place. That's what remote place is for. The name we chose for our place in the last video is MX8. So let's use that here. That's it for the resources. Now we switch back to the environment configuration. We can now add drivers. Let's switch back to the bare box strategy. First, we need a driver that implements the power protocol. We can choose from different drivers. In the last video, I told you that I have a USB controllable power switch here on my desk. If you do not have a controllable power switch, you can use the manual power driver. This will ask you to power the board off or on manually. But for my case, we can look at the place we set up last time. We do that via the show command. Here you see the syspm power port. We could now look for a driver binding against that resource. The syspm power driver. Let's copy that. No need to change the defaults here for my case. We need a driver implementing the console protocol. It has a USB serial port connected, so we can use the serial driver from here. Now we need the bare box driver. There are a lot of arguments, but we do not need all of them. There is no bearbox password set here, no special interrupt key, so let's use the example here. The last driver we need is the shell driver. Let's look it up in the documentation. It supports a whole set of arguments, but we can simply use the example here as a starting point. 
I know that this regex will not match the prompt of my board, so let's adjust that slightly. Like that. The login prompt is ok, user root works, no password set. Now we want to also use the bearbox strategy itself. Because strategies are in fact special drivers, we specify the bearbox strategy here in the driver section too. And that should be all. Now let's see if everything works out. I will show you Labgrid client's help page again. The minus C or minus minus config switch here is for the environment config we just created. Then there is the minus S or minus minus state switch, strategy state to switch into before command, meaning it will transition to the given state before our subcommand like console is executed. So let's do labgrid client minus C, then the environment configuration nfyaml. Let's start with the bare box state here. As we want to access the console once our requested state is given, we use the console subcommand. To see what is happening during the transition, we add two verbose switches here. As you may have noticed, I did neither specify the environment variable lg underscore place, nor did I add the minus p or minus minus place switch. This is not required here because we specified the name of the place in our environment configuration nfyaml. Now let's see if the board reaches the bearbox state and we get a serial console in the bearbox shell. So the board is off now. Now it's on. And there we are in the bearbox shell. Here we go, trying the same for the shell state. So the board is off, on again. Let's make that full screen. There is the kernel system D taking over. We see all the serial communication here. And there we are locked in in the Linux shell. As you can see with strategies, you can easily transition your board into any state you defined in your strategy. We have learned how LabGrid's driver model works, what LabGrid strategies are and how to transition into states using the command line interface. In the next video, we will see how to automate workflows with strategies and how to create automated tests. Thanks for watching. See you next time.